Well, hello and welcome to yet another video. This time out on the bench we've got this very nice Roberts R300. Now these were made in the UK by Roberts Radio between 1964 and 1967 um, and they were replaced by the Roberts R303 from 1967. Just a two wave band set with the familiar sort of Roberts dial face here. Um, just three controls. You've got power off on and um, medium wave long wave switch you've got the tuning here and you've got a volume control here no tone at all with the tone circuitry is built into the um, set itself um, we've got a mesh grill here and this brass I think it's brass trim surround it might be plastic actually trim um, the case rather than the flat sides of the R200 is actually uh, spreading out towards the bottom here. We've got a real leather handle and we've got this um, baffle in the back here. For more bass response I guess inside the radio looks very similar to the R200. Nice to see this plate here isn't corroded. We've got three AF117s We've got an OC81, I would think, yep, here. And we've got two drivers, which are, again, OC81s. Um, we've got punts capacitors absolutely everywhere. We've got a couple of Plessies here. And we've got these, I think these are also Plessy, but they might be hunts. Not sure there, but they're all probably duff, especially these ones. Um, not so worried about the Hunts capacitors in these at the moment. Um, they are plastic uh, encapsulated and they seem to have more trouble in valve sets where they get hot and cold and the plastic just um, just comes off the, the outer here. Um, this one has got a very wobbly tuning capacitor here. Um, I'm pretty sure someone's been in here before, in fact I know so, because all the screen leads have been cut on the AF117s. On the side, oh sorry, on the back we've got um, an external aerial input so you could have it in your car or whatever. There's no headphone jack or anything on these. So, first things first, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. We've got a battery here, we're just going to uh, connect the battery up and uh, see what happens. These have a reputation for not working at all. Alright, it's on the medium wave. So as I thought, we've got the amplifier working but we've got no action from any of the RF stages. So what we're going to use is this special mallard hammer. Now these were issued to radio technicians in 1967 um, and they were for tapping AF117s to make sure that uh, they could actually still work and get rid of all the whiskers inside. So let's give that a go. And just my intuition tells me it's going to be this transistor here in the middle, number two. So we're nearly there, but we're nearly not. And that noise is all the tin whiskers breaking apart and the, the transistor trying to work. Seems like we've got a total failure here and it isn't going to work. Right, so that tells us the story that it would work if that transistor was working. So let's 
take the set off. Sorry, let's take the battery off. And um, we're going to look at replacing at least this transistor, more than likely all three. I think this one has been replaced because it's of a different manufacture. This is this is a BEI AF116. Um, now that should be an AF117, so that's a sure sign that someone has actually been in here. Um, to get the chassis out, you just pull these wedges out. On these, there are two screws here. Um, the screws in this case were very worn. Um, I'm probably not going to put them back in or at least choose um, some more brand new screws to put in. So I'm going to get on with that. As years go by it's been getting harder and harder to buy uh, geranium transistors at a reasonable price. Um, so you know our options are starting to be a little bit limited. Um, obviously the af 117s here we can zap, um, we can take them out, zap them and replace them and I've got a bag of ones that I've already done here so they could in fact go in the radio there's no guarantee that these are not going to get all whiskery up and uh, we're going to have to take them out again we could go for the GT332s from Russia um, but they are getting mightily expensive these were like 10 quid for 200 a few years ago now they're like 200 quid for 10 um, as I film this, it's unlikely we're going to be able to get anything out of Russia anyway. Um, so, we've got to look for other options. The other option is uh, alternative uh, germanium transistors, like these 2N4035s, although they might actually be silicon, I'm not sure of that. Anyway, um, but we can try silicon things like the BC214s. They will work. We could try 2N3906s, they're as common as muck. We could try BC558s. We could try BC557s. We can try 2N4501s. Or we could try BC213s. All of these stand a chance of working. Um, I don't feel there is any point in fussing and worrying about trying to replace old uh, germanium transistors with new germanium transistors. Supplies are running out, things are not getting any cheaper. No one's going to look in this radio and go, oh that's not got AF117s in it, I'm not going to buy it. The most important thing is that the radio works. Now we can take those silicone transistors, we can pop the tops off these and we can uh, Evo stick them back on the silicone transistors. No one will ever notice if we want to keep some form of um, um, originality. We're going to be replacing some of these, um, you know, these um, uh, electrolytics here anyway. So you're not going to be able to keep it as it actually was. So I don't see the point in fussing and worrying and especially spending five quid on a transistor. Right, the chassis is out. A little bit more, uh, a little bit easier than the R200. I guess because the bottom's a little bit um, wider. Um, all we do is pull the two wooden wedges out and then the chassis just slips out with a little bit of toing and froing. As I said in the previous clip, very glad to see there's no battery acid um, attack on this metal bit here because that sometimes spoils R200s and R300s. Um, one thing I did want to show you was, uh, if we can get it, is um, the state of the contacts on this switch. They should be nice and silver. This one is as black as coal, and I guess the other side is too. So that definitely needs to be cleaned. 
the tuning capacitor is bouncing around like a small child in the back of a Land Rover that is horrible that's no good and um, the board is dirty but otherwise okay that's just years of dirt there's a little metal shield there that someone's been in I don't know if you can see that that looks like a modern screw or a more recent screw than was likely fitted I'm not sure this is the first R300 I've actually owned uh, I'm not sure about that but someone's definitely been in there um, and obviously that transistor here has been replaced at some time but um, yeah fairly easy chassis to work on first thing we're going to try and replace this one here and see if that brings it back to life properly um, we need to do something about this fabric sort of plaster type stuff as well um, a little bit of heat will sort that out that holds the dial face on really um, although it's held on by these three knobs um, there's a little bit of dust proofing going on there as well with these fabric strips and of course the uh, uh, obligatory knob knob bright thing has uh, fallen off as they always do on Robert's sets the glue just dries out it's you know it's nearly 60 years old but uh, at least we've got them all and they will go in a little plastic bag somewhere safe in the back of the radio for now right so let's get transistorizing well I've replaced all three transistors and as you can hear the uh, radio is working um, all three came out as we've got uh, got an AF116 there and that was duff we've got an AF117 there which I think that was duff and this one TR3 I believe was absolutely fine but we're going to take it out anyway I've also removed a 10 UF electrolytic to give me more access to replace that transistor there so there we go we've replaced three geraniums with three new silicones obviously PNPs and the set still works and I've not had to change any resistors or anything um, on long wave I've got a lot of interference in here and that I think is my central heating um, timer because I've recently had a new central heating system fitted now if we turn it to long wave and turn the aerial some what? you can actually hear long wave coming through so it there so if I null that out that's BBC 4 there on long wave right I've replaced uh, the final transistor if I didn't do that before can't remember but I've now replaced all the uh, electrolytics and um, Sounds great. I've not replaced any of these plastic hunts as I mentioned before. The set's working pretty well. I don't see any reason to start going in there and um, trying to wreck the traces and stuff. That's one issue with these early PCBs. The traces do lift and whoever's been in here before me has lifted a couple of traces around here which I've had to repair um, using the approved PACE method um, I would recommend going and looking up some of those videos from Mr PACE if you can on how to repair PCB tracks um, what's left to do well there's obviously a major cleaning job ahead of us my most pressing thing is to secure this tuning capacitor which is wobbling around like Mr Wobble um, that's just the rubber grommets gone take the knobs off, take the dial off um, I think the rubber grommets is t looks like there's two sets of rubber grommets maybe um, under the dial face um, and then we've got the j good job of cleaning the case and the case is quite mouldy here and there 
And then, as I mentioned, very kindly, Mr. Cody has sent me a new catch, which goes there and secures the back panel. And we've got a bit of woodwork to do because uh, not having the catch has meant the screws have sprung a bit. So that's just shoving a matchstick down the hole with a little bit of glue and then putting the screws in again. That'll work fine. So I'm going to get on with that. Well, here's the R300 all done. Um, I've taken all the knobs off, put them in an ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned all the brights up, um, repainted actually this plastic brass trim here um, just with a little bit of gold because it was getting a little bit worn. You could see the plastic coming through. Obviously, cleaned the grill, the Rexine mm, or vinyl covering here in my opinion could do with a bit more sheen on it um, it sort of lost its luster a bit the handles in great condition clean that up um, thanks to Paul we've got a new catch here um, yes yeah, just there's a little bit of a nick here which uh, I'll just put my finger over there and pretend you can't see it inside well the object of this project was to replace the uh, germanium transistors with silicone and we've got three different uh, silicone transistors in there I can't remember which ones I use now maybe a BC213 a 2N5401 and I can't remember the other one it might be BC557 can't remember replaced the uh, electrolytics um, left these old hunts capacitors in there because the set seems to be working quite well I didn't re-bias any of the transistors or anything, it seems to be working perfectly well. Um, cleaned up the hinge, that was a bit bent. Um, someone had obviously put some weight on the back door when it was open. Um, and there we go, sets all... With this small group of people and hope, hopefully... Sets all working. Elena, Colin and Tatiana. Hopefully we can speak. So there we go, that's the project sort of ended. Oh, and I've replaced the missing top of the tee here with a bit of plastic card and some chrome pen to paint it. So you can't really see it was ever missing now. So a nice set, I quite enjoyed working on this. Better than the R200 to work on actually. Um, easier to get the radio chassis out of the case. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and thanks to Paul Mr. Codice for the door catch there um, and uh, see you soon.